We are back on Morning Line. Our guest is Clifton Harris, Urban League of Middle Tennessee. We've just kind of reviewed uh, the latest uh, federal report from the National Urban League on the state of black America. And it's worth talking about whether you're black, white, otherwise uh, living in a community, understanding what's happening to some of your neighbors and those who are around us. And I appreciate Clifton coming on this morning. Uh, we kind of painted the grim picture. It is kind of uh, grim in terms of especially some of these things that where you would hope after you know the civil rights movement all these years later things have improved but in areas of wealth it's pretty much the same as it was going back to the 1960s the yeah. disparities yeah you know because you know people are having you know to you know inflation is is a very real thing and as a result of that people having to use their savings you know to pay for everyday expenses you know the the cost of living is going up you know for for everybody and then when you're all already you know, spending over 50% of your income on housing, that does not leave a lot of discretionary income, Nick, you know, to be able to do some of the other things, you know, like eat. Right. All right. So we, we wanted to talk, we painted the picture, and people are going to be watching this. Some of it comes as a surprise. Some of it's not going to come to a surprise, mm -hmm. especially those in the African-American community who are living it. Mm -hmm. um, I w okay. So w what do you hope that these reports spur on, and where do we go on this? Well, I hope that these, these reports, you know, spur on, you know, our, our fight, our, uh, the work that we have to do. You know, we in hear that in every in darn year. In public policy. Yeah, and that's okay. And, right? But what we see happening right now with redistricting right. and the way they're changing it and maybe to the point where, you know, the, the I worry that that many will decide, you know, what's the point of voting sometimes when these redistricting things come along and they feel as though, you know, their candidates won't even get a shot. Yeah, well, I mean, if you don't vote and all, then you're going to get more and all of, of, of um, even more of what you've got. You know? So right. you, you have to vote in order and all to be able to have uh, representation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, votes matter. <laughs> they, 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 they really do make, make a difference. Um, and so we definitely encourage people to, to vote, but there's an all-out assault on our democracy right now in order you know, to, for a certain block of people you know, to gain control you know, of, um, or diminish our voting power, if, if you will. Um, we're seeing you know, tactics like intimidation, gerrymandering, as you mm -hmm. stated, you know, redistricting. You know, um, and so as a result, we have less representation. You know, um, and that is not good. And so, when you uh, are are dealing with public policy, you want people and all in the room that look like me uh, deciding on policies that's going to impact me, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, the representation matters. How do you see and feel the representation is here in Middle Tennessee? You know, city council and metro, or you know, um, judges. Um, yeah, and we're in a political race. There are many candidates, many African American many. candidates. There are many fine African American judges um, in criminal right. court and otherwise that we've done gavel to gavel on. Uh, how do you feel the representation is there right now? And let's take it all the way to the police department. Well, I think and all that you know, black police chief. Yeah, yeah. A, a rep, the the representation. For for um, Nashville and Davidson County, Middle Tennessee, has to look like the community that it serves, <clears throat> right? And it does not. And so we got some work to do. Okay, talk about where. What, 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 when you say it does not, uh, give me some examples. Well, like I mean, for instance, you know, um, I think it's no secret, you know, e e even in our uh, police department, you know, mm -hmm. our police department needs to have the representation that looks like the community that it serves. Our fire department, um, um, our city council, you mm -hmm. know, uh, as an example, um, in our um, uh, offices, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So, so yeah, there, you know, at our, at our legislation, you know, state legislators, um, our, our our representatives, you know, that we send to Congress, you know, they, you know, we need to have representation that look like the people um, that the community you know makes up I, do you believe I mean there are uh, enough I mean part of the issue is getting the good candidates to getting, run and, and, and whether they're willing or want to is that part of the issue here or do you think uh, there's any issues getting what you think are qualified applicants that are willing to run I think right we now. have qualified applicants that are willing I don't, to I don't, run? I yeah. don't think that, that are willing to run I don't think that's the the issue okay uh, I, I think the issue and all gets down and all to the vote you know you gotta you gotta get turn out the vote in right. order to be able and all to get people and all to vote yeah. for you 
um, and you got to be able to talk to about the issues. Well, and it gets down to the also getting out the votes is is what it costs That's what and it the costs. money. And we've talked about right. the disparity in money and right. such. And well, so many people sometimes you know finance their own campaigns. Yeah, but, I, I mean, mean, you talk about an election <laughs> that's going to cost you know three million dollars. Right. You know, who has three million dollars you know, to run for an office that's only going to pay you you know a hundred thousand dollars a year? I mean, mm -hmm. you know. Um, getting back to the police department then, um, the diversity in there. You know, we do have an African American police chief, but. Um, you know, there have been some pretty high-profile cases here mm -hmm. where there have been officer-involved shootings. As a result, there is one officer serving time right now, mm -hmm. um, you know, for a, a shooting. Um, do you get the sense that uh, when it comes to law enforcement in the, the metro area, an African-American is pulled over? Do they view them as, is this adversarial, is it scary? Or is this something that where, okay, they'll be treated like anyone else? How well, do you think that feels here? Well, I think, you know, you know if you're a, a black American, especially, I'll speak from my perspective okay. as a black ma male. Sure. Um, if I get pulled over and all, I have a lot of thoughts running through my head. Okay. Right? And so um, I have been taught what to do and what to say. And, uh, and my objective at that moment is to make sure and all that I get home. Right? So... Mm -hmm. um, now, that's not always the case, right? We have great police officers. Mm -hmm. I think we have more good police officers than we do bad police officers. Oh, sure. But there are occasions, you know, where you have bad police officers that do bad things, and as a result, you know, people get hurt behind it. And so um, we have to be mindful and all of that. And I think Chief Drake is doing a great job and all of making sure and all that, you know, we are, he's putting uh, individuals, men and women, out on the street and all that is truly willing to be guardians that will serve and protect and all the population. Yeah. I mean, it's just interesting as you describe how you handle it if you get pulled over. Yeah. Your mindset, because of where you come from and your background, is different than what I will think if I'm pulled over. Absolutely. It is different, and, it's, and, that's, and that's not right. Yeah, it's it's not right, it, but that's... It's not right, but it's, it's, it's reality. But I understand it, uh, and time and again on this program, people are like, well, just cooperate with law enforcement. Well, you're more likely to cooperate if you're not fearing someone, you know, sometimes. And I guess my point is, too, as we move forward with all of this, you know, we, we want African Americans, obviously, to understand, be involved, and vote. But you, you, you hope, is there an understanding there among the white population? Do you think we get these reports out? In general, does the whole population understand? And maybe um, sometimes it'd be nice to see more empathy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's and that's the job of the Urban League of Middle Tennessee to be able to uh, speak to these issues and get this information out in the hands of the community yeah. and hold forums and all where people can discuss you no know, real issues, issues that that matter, issues you know that not not. This is not uh, anecdotal information. This is information and all that has been tracked now for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Let's take a call from Thomas. Thomas, good morning. Hi, Tom. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm a 75 year old native Nashvilleian. Now, you know, it just blows my mind that people don't know that Tennessee succeeded from the Union during the Civil War and fought to preserve slavery. Another thing, the Tennessean newspaper around 1978, I wish somebody would find this photo, has a picture of Nathan Bedford Forrest and the Ku Klux Klan in their full regalia. It's on the, uh, you can find it on the Tennessean newspaper around 1978. Thank you very much. Mm. Right. Um, you just made a couple. Of, I don't know if you want to comment with regard to Nathan Bedford Forrest and attention to things that maybe are found offensive by members of the, the black community. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that that statue of Nathan Bedford Forrest on mm -hmm. I-65 finally mm -hmm. came down. Finally came down. We know the story. I drove by it every, every day for oh, a number of years. Right. And the flags I think are still up. Confederate mm -hmm. flags, but the mm -hmm. statue's down. We know that the bust of Nathan Bedford Forrest and all the controversy over that in the state capitol. Just your thoughts on that? The fact that that brought attention and, and it was controversial, and there were those who didn't want that removed mm -hmm. and people you know saying look it's it's not a racist thing it's history thing and you know not wanting it down but it came down what do you think of that well I was I was glad to see it come down and I think it was time for it to to, to come down um, it is a symbol um, 
of, uh, I guess, you know, heritage for some people, mm -hmm. but it was a symbol for hate, you know, for other people. What did you think when you drove by it every day? Um, that it needed to come down, you know. Um, but I mean, it's hurtful to you to see that. Yeah, what you Nathan, Nathan Bedford Forrest did not represent me. Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, and, and knowing the history of how people were enslaved and how people were taken advantage of um, and the atrocities that were done to people, you know, it was, it was time for it to come down. There's, that is not who Tennessee is. Take a break on that note, and for those who aren't familiar, that statue was on private property, but when the owner, Bill Doris, passed away, you know, he willed some of it to various organizations, and that's where, through the process of divvying up his mm -hmm. possessions, it did ultimately come down. So, yeah, I think a lot of people were glad to see it come mm -hmm. down. Some not so much, but um, it's gone, and it's, uh, I don't think it's coming back. I don't think it's coming back. We'll take a break. When we come back, uh, we can take more phone calls. Cindy and others stay there. As I said, we're talking this morning with Clifton Harris. He's the CEO um, of the Urban League of Middle Tennessee. But uh, in regards to just out the National Urban League's um, national report on black America, we'll be back with more right after this.